Ian Rigby, author of Frogs Don't Quack, loves writing children's books, which is a good job as he can dance and he's terrible at solving fractions or anything with a strange sign written by aliens. He also writes nonfiction, and his latest book, Traffic Light, is about living with depression from a young age. He lives in the UK with his wife, two daughters, and a dog, Bailey, who stars in his own book and has become a bit of a diva. In 2021, he publishes, in collaboration with Eurobox, a new children's book entitled Mobile Whale. He's here with us today to tell us a bit more around this new story. Ian, it's good to see you. Hello, everybody. Lovely to be here. What is Mobile Whale about? Uh, well, Mobile Whale is, <clears throat> as the title suggests, about a, uh, a whale, a blue whale called William, and he swallows a mobile phone. Now, inside William lives a little lobster called Reuben. Uh, the phone goes off, Reuben answers it, and they discover it's from a little girl called Clara, uh, and she's lost it, but the phone is very important to her, and um, they decide to return it, but they've got to return it in less than three days, uh, and so begins their quest to get it back to Clara. Of course, we learn a little bit later on why the phone is so important, but they have to navigate lots of dangerous waters and other humans and other whales and other creatures trying to stop them. Um, so that's really the crux of the book. Okay, we already said it's a um, children book, of course. Uh, what age exactly shall we suggest and why? Well, I would say, um, I would, I mean, anybody can read it actually. I mean, it's for, it's for the young and the old. I mean, even an adult would appreciate some of the humour that's in it. Um, it could be read to younger children, but I would probably put it in the bracket of between, I would say about eight, eight plus but it could be read to younger children. Uh, oh, hang on, hang on. But, yeah, yeah. He, he, said, he said he could read. You could read it to anybody. William is saying, but probably eight plus. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, in regard to this, um, what were the first comments around mo mobile whale like? Uh, mostly, what did your daughter say? Uh, well, <clears throat> the first person to read it once I finished it was actually my wife, uh, Amanda. Uh, and she's kind of my harshest critic, and she loved it, um, which is kind of a little bit unusual because I, I write sort of in a very peculiar style. So she really liked it. And then I gave it to my daughter, who is a little bit older. Uh, she's 17, and she read it. She really enjoyed it. Um, and she could see it sort of anybody who sort of has an interest sort of in sort of any type of sort of like, you know stories with a with a fun and sort of humorous sort of twist to it would like it i gave it to my eldest daughter uh molly uh who's a police officer by the way so i've got to behave myself um she read it and she liked it as well but it is aimed at a younger audience but the, the people who read it uh, including adults they seem to have enjoyed it also so it's, it's been well received um, Ian, listen, what's your inspiration when you write? And what's the best moment to write? <clears throat> Ooh, well, I, I find that the best inspiration is sort of when it's a, you don't expect it. I mean, the premise for Mobile Wear was really a simple one. I wanted to combine technology, the use of technology, so mobile, which everybody uses, including most young people nowadays, but also a, a, a larger than life character. So I put the two together, but then I thought, well, it could be something a little bit bigger than this. And I wanted um, an element of doing something without what, getting a reward, doing something, sacrificing something in order to achieve something for somebody else. And also there was the element of the plastics in the ocean. That's actually part of the book and the sort of the, the the trawler nets that are used, um, so it kind of sort of grew from that. But but generally, sort of the, the way I write is a piece of dialogue will come into my head. I'll sort of put it to the back of my head, or I'll write it down, uh, and I'll store it for uh, for, for later. Um, so when I'm writing, I tend to just jump straight in. In fact, sometimes I write a middle, uh, a beginning, 
and then an end. It's a very strange process, but it can be anything from a piece of music, uh, a piece of dialogue in my head, just sort of daydreaming, um, anything and everything, really. It's, it's a strange process sort of uh, uh, that, uh, that happens. Despite your attitude, which is brilliant, I love it, um, you're very funny, even when you write. But what can your book teach children? Well, I think, I think the, the main thing it teaches is, is, is friendship. Um, I like the fact that sort of Reuben only has one claw. I won't tell you why he's only got one claw, but he does. Uh, but it doesn't stop him. Uh, and both of the, the two main characters, Reuben the Lobster and William the Whale, both have different strengths and weaknesses. So one is the, the, the biggest animal on the planet. Reuben is, is, is quite possibly one of the, the smaller sort of crustaceans uh, on the planet. And uh, they both bring different sort of strengths to the story. I also like the fact that we're willing to do something uh, that, which could potentially you know, end in disaster for them. So, but once they realise the sort of a little girl is involved, and we discover why, which I won't sort of, I won't sort of give, give it away, uh, they go on this journey, but they're risking themselves uh, in order to get the, the phone back to her. But they also know that humans play a big part in saving the planet. So it's got a it's a very a marine sort of um, story to it as well. You know, without sort of them helping humans. You know, why should humans help, help help them? So everybody's got to come together uh, and, and sacrifice something. So it's about sort of friendship, sacrifice. I mean, it's also got lots of uh, elements of danger in it. And there's got bad guys, which are the killer whales. Um, we've got sort of uh, treasure chests. Uh, we've got octopuses, um, which is uh, Reuben's arch enemy. Um, and then we've, we've got a, a whaling ship that is also pursuing the... Um, the, the William as well. Um, so it touches on that about sort of how the whaling ships are used to, well, it's meant to be for scientific research, but that's rubbish. Um, but there are lots of laws that protect marine animals, but sadly, some humans still um, kill these wonderful, wonderful creatures. So it's got lots of elements combined into it, which made a really good story. Thoroughly enjoyable to, to write as well. Um, really loved it. In fact, so I'm thinking of a sequel, which you keep it back in your mind. Thank you very much, Ian. We wish you very good luck with your mobile whale. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was lovely speaking to you. Mobile Whale is now available in bookstores and digital platforms. It's a publication by Europe Books.